Welcome, my dear viewers. I want to welcome us to this edition of our, our yearly solution set for technical drawing object. I am your host, MC Daniel, engineer MC Daniel. I wish to use this opportunity to really thank as many as are who have kept faith with me during this long period of time that I have not been able to come online to present these tutorial solutions. A lot of things have gone under the waters, but I thank God that from the finally I am back. By the grace of God, I am fully back. And nothing will at this moment stop us from getting along this time around. So today, I am here with us, carrying along together with us the journey as usual. And the question we'll be answering, which we would have answered last year, but couldn't answer it, is 2022 wire question. So, as we step into this, I want you to settle your mind. Let us ride on. All right, now. Like I said, now let's begin. You have to see what you're going to see. This is what that you see here, and the ones you see here are telling you how you fill your details before you start your examinations. And the name is written here. We we'll just make up names to show you how names are written. Your surname first, and the rest after. All right. So let's progress and jump into the solution set immediately. Okay. A sample of how. The question is shared that is given to you here, just like we have this as a question given and the correct answer should be shaded here. Don't ever allow shading to come outside this area. It should be shaded within these areas. Okay, so let's begin now. In section A, we are dealing with objective question. You are asked to answer all the questions in this section. You are requested to answer all the questions in this particular section. All right, so assistance now. We want to go straight into the questions proper. Now, this is question number one. The video that follows after now will show you how this answer we are arrived at immediately. Question number one. One hundred millimeters squared is the same thing as ten millimeters times ten millimeters. Each one millimeter is one centimeter, which is one centimeter times one centimeter. Automatically you know one centimeter square. So the correct answer here is A. And this is question number two. There is a tutorial video that will explain to you how the decision here is really taken and the answer that is correct there. Question number two. This is interpretation of that question, which is a certain line is parallel to the horizontal. This is the line. It is parallel to the horizontal plane. And then it is at a inclined angle to the vertical. This is the angle here to the vertical plane, which is the vertical plane. So we are now to which of the following views show the true length. Of course, since it is parallel to the horizontal, then exactly as it is, if you look at that line, that line is spaced from the top. The same length you have here with the same length you have here. So the true length appears on the horizontal plane. The answer is what? Plan view. And that is B. And this third video is a question which says, uh, which can answer directly without any tutorial video attached to it. Sorry, something is itching me on the nose somewhere here. Right, question number three is the length L, that is this particular length. In figure one, is half full length. Now, the question nine is okay, so let us get the question. It's in the next page. And that question goes like this. As you can see, the question around here. What type of pictorial view is shown in the sketch? The correct answer to this particular one is, uh, is A, is cabinet, uh, you know, cabinet oblique drawing. This is because 
Yes, public drawing is here, but it comes in two different forms, namely the uh, the Cavalier drawing and then the cabinet drawing. Please don't bother about this angle they give in this place. It's just to confuse you. They brought the angle for isometric and put it inside this place. But the drawing itself is uh, oblique. And had it been the question is not placed along this particular line, we would have said that this particular question is for isometric, meant to deceive you. So the answer for this one is A. Now, and this question talks about locus of a point. That's number four. Locus of a point which moves round a right uh, cylindrical ax axially at a uniform speed. Axially means if you have a cylinder standing, the, the, the thing moves vertically, or from the bottom going vertically along the length of that cylinder. It's the locus of the point moved in that particular place. So the one that gives us the correct answer here is actually the involute. Yes, if you have a rope tied around the cylinder as you are dragging it along, the pattern you're going to get will be uh, a, an involute. It's an involute that we have in this particular case. In question number five, a length of one meter on a land is represented by two millimeters on a drawing. What is the drawing scale used? All right, the answer for this one, this one needs a little work. And so, for that reason, I will leave you with the next video that will help you understand it properly. Question number five. The length of one meter on the land is represented by two millimeters on a drawing. What is the drawing scale? I have written something here. We all know that one meter is the same thing as 1,000 millimeters. But the question says on the paper, one meter is represented by two millimeters. What does that mean? That means we can manage two millimeters to replace this one to give us two millimeters as it is by the ratio is the same as 1,000 millimeters. I've converted one meter to this. Divide both sides by two to have it one ratio. So it's going to be double to have one ratio 500. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Now, this is question number six. Question number six is a drawing and, uh, of course, presented with a section, section PP. Okay? To properly understand this question well, I will leave you with the video next to it to explain it. Question number six. For us to decide the end view section PP, let us cut this thing across. And this is what we're going to have. So we are stating that this one has been cut out open along this line. Okay? That means we don't need this side. And the arrow here says so we should put in that direction. Automatically, this is what we will have. This thing will be gone. Hmm? This particular side will be gone. Everything here will go. So what we have left, when we have removed this side, this is what we have left. We will have something like this, and then after like this, we will have this one that goes like this, and this particular one, right, it will open to give us something of this nature. Now this hole is going to travel through, so that this center line will be able to come up like this. Okay, we have this one. Then when sectioning it, you know that this one now will be something of this nature. Our center line is still there. So which part will be affected by section line will definitely be, you know, sorry, let me adjust these things. Uh -huh. The part that will be affected by the section line will be this side. By the cutting plane will be this side. So, once you've gotten that, observe this. Once you've gotten this section, and then you look at it in this direction, of 
care in the direction of D, what you are going to get will be the answer will come out from here. What you are going to see will be exactly so A. Yeah, A will be the correct. Now, question number seven. Question number seven has the following. Which of the following iconic section has an eccentricity of less than one? The answer here is parabola. Of course, in this part, sorry, less than one. The correct answer is A, hyperbola. The, the eccentricity of hyperbola is less than one. Parabola is exactly one, and the rest of them are more than one. So take note of this exactly, and that is what that's supposed to be. And question number eight. A truss is an intersection of two. In fact, the correct answer to this one is line. A truss is a spot that the line is space created on a plane. So, no other thing can give you a spot except line. And when two lines meet, actually where they meet each other is a, is a truss is a spot. All right? Question number nine. Now, we are asked to use this figure to answer questions nine and ten. And question 9 goes like this. It says, ratio by which line, you know, line PT is divided is, the answer should be here. And then as well as number 10, the two of them will be answered by the video that goes after this question. Just to answer questions 9 and 10. So see how it is done. Now, ratio, the ratio by which the, the line PT is divided is what? It's divided by this ratio, see the point 1, 2, ratio 1, 2, 3, 4, ratio 1, 2. And when you divide this, you're going to have 1, ratio 2, ratio 1. The answer to this one is D. Question number 10. The sentence says, if the actual length of the first of the three portions is that the crucial portions of the line PT is 4 centimeters. This is first of the three portions. And then they say, what is the length of PT? What is the length of this line? What it means is that first of the three portions is from here to here. If it is 4 centimeters, to get the total one, we know that first of the portion has two divisions. Two divisions which give us 4 centimeters. Are you getting it? So the entire length of this PT has 8 divisions. So 8 divisions now will give us what? Give us what? So you multiply x is equal to 8 times 4 divided by 2, which is 60 centimeters. So the line is 60 centimeters long. And the correct answer here is C. Number 10. Alright. Now, question number 11. Question number 11. Uh, a quadrilateral with four equal sides whose diagonal bisect each other at right angles is what? The only correct answer here is not in the rhombus. Rhombus, the sides of a rhombus are all equal. And normally, the diagonal between them also cross each other. At 90 degrees. So we need to get that set properly. The answer is A. Number 12. A rectangular solid that is bounded by that is bounded by four equilateral triangles. Actually, the correct answer is A, tetrahedral. That's the correct answer. The answer is what tetrahedral. To so take note of that. Now, question number 13. This particular question requires illustration for you to decide which answer is the correct one. So I will leave you in the next video to explain this. Question number 13. The question reads as follows. The sketch in figure 4 shows a method of what? Let's find it. Actually, the answer is supposed to be D. And we need to know how this thing happened. It is a method used in dividing a triangle into two equal parts. This is done like this. 
First thing to do is drop the perpendicular from the apex of this down to this place so that we can have something like this. C. Now I'll call here D. The next thing to do is to dissect D to D. And to dissect it is to have a line of this nature. Then come to this place and do the same thing. So we can have a bisection like this. From the tattoo, you draw a semicircle. A semicircle. We now have a semicircle from here. We bring it to this place. A semicircle. So the next thing now to do after bisecting D, D to G and constructing this semicircle, we again bisect A to B. So let's bisect it again. A to D. Let's bisect it. We have something like this. We come down to this place. Okay, we have this one. Let's complete it. We have it. The second bisector. Hereby, joining this one and that. And we have done this one. We extend this bisector to touch the semicircle somewhere here. So where the bisector touch the semicircle, the last thing to be done will be to place, let's call here that thing, let's call here F. And then the last thing to be done is to place our feet here, bring it to F, and draw an arc to give us this place, this spot. F here becomes G. The next thing we have to do lastly is to draw a line perpendicular from G, exactly vertical. Now we can call it here H. The line line G H has divided this particular triangle into two equal areas. Question number 14. Of course, this one, the answer here is B actually, but the video that comes after now should be able to give you a better picture of what this particular question is asking. The correct answer actually is B. And let us show it out to the construction. The first thing to do is use this particular point, the midpoint here, to get the middle line between them. So that means to bisect between here and here. So I place it this like this, and then I make an arc here and there. I make an arc up and down. So this will give us the bisector, the bisector of this line. So let me make a mark there. And then we are putting it. Next thing is use your ruler. Divide the four divisions along this way. Make the four divisions along this way. Let's say, make the make the open the link to us into And make that one, four, eight, twelve, sixteen. Then this way again, I have four, eight. And have this one, twelve. So I've divided that this is a middle point. The next thing we are going to do at the center of this sorry, place it here. And then I draw. I place it here again. I draw from the north. So I come to this other side. This is the center of this one too, I from here. This one will actually meet the middle part. We meet to this one here. The next one we meet to this one here. This one is right here. Second one is meeting this one here. So we see that I'm choosing the point. The points are the fourth one, the third one, the first, this one, this one, then we have upon this one, we have this, 
we have this, we have that and that. The core, we join it. The core comes up like this in this manner. So it's a curved line that bent in the shop. So the correct answer here is B is the correct answer. Question number 15. <laughs> Question number 15. Uh, it says triangles on the same base and between same parallel lines have equal what, area. The answer is yes, whenever triangle have the same height and they have the same base, what they will give you is nothing but what two triangles that have the same area. So take note of that. Now, the question number 16. Which of the following plane figure is not a parallel over? What you should be careful here to note for you to decide the answer is that this arrowhead here and the other show that they are parallel. This one and these are parallel. This one and these are parallel. This one and these are also parallel. It's only this one that does not have a parallel symbol, arrowhead, show that they are parallel. Secondly, it has also 90 degrees at the point. Confirmingly showing that A is the correct. Number 17. Number 17. Now it says when uh, number 17, when the curved surface of a hollow cone is cut open, it forms a now let's get that. What does it form? It forms a sector of a circle. That's the correct answer. That's how I see. When you have a cone and you cut it along, you open it. You're going to have something like hand fan. That is good. that Chinese kind of hand fan now is going to be a sector. All right? In the shape of a sector. The answer is C. Question number 18. They said the sketch in figure six showed the surface development of a truncated what? The answer is A. Cool. It is a cone that is truncated that gives this kind of shape. So that's how it's A. All right, question number 19. The correct answer actually is uh, B. That is B. Go to 60 and 85. Now, let me prove it from this uh, on the board. The entire distance from this meeting point to this place radius is 400. The diameter of this is that you can know that from here to here is 50. And if we extend it also, it is 50. See, when this one reaches here, it has the same length as 100. And that is from here to here, it will be 100. But then, when you subtract half of this, which is 50, you are going to get 85. The same thing applies to here. Half of this is 40. Distance from here to here is 100. So 100 minus 40 will give us 60. Therefore, the answer is 60 and 85. That's the correct answer, which is B. Question number 19. This question number 19 needs explanation or a sample illustration to really explain it so that you can understand. So please pay attention to the next video that comes after it for understanding. Question number 20. The axial distance for one revolution of a two start screw thread is axia. You know, when we say two start thread, it means this is a thread that has two, uh, do I call it two teeth going around it? Okay, each of them started from two locations. And they are telling us what's the distance whenever one of them, you know, when there's one complete rotation. Actually, the correct answer is pitch, because when there's one complete rotation, one teeth will find itself occupying the position of the second teeth, and that is what happens here. And that distance is simply the same as one pitch. Correct answer is therefore C. Question number 21. Question number 21. We are requested to use this diagram to answer question 21 and question 22. So let us look at this question closely to decide. To read off this, this is diagonal scale. All right, so the measurement starts from here and stops here. So this is two. Take note, it's two already, all of them here. To now get the next measurement, you come and count from here because you have to take care of this line that you have here. 
So take it, count it. One, two, three, four, five. You see that we have six here. All right? This is six. The one that have gotten 60 position. Follow it and count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you see that we have 2.67? So the correct answer here is B. The correct measurement, the length measurement is actually B. So take note of that particular measurement. All right? The answer is uh, B. Let's look at the next question that goes with it. Question 22 is still using the same question. Now we are asked the actual length of this is therefore what? If you take the previous one, there is a place they say that one meter, the same thing as the ratio of 100. So simply use that 100 to multiply that 2.67. And the answer you're going to have, like, see, that's 267 meters. That's correct. So the answer is, for 22, is C. Question number 23. Question 23. We are asked in this case that diagram are going to answer 20, answer question 23 and question number 24. So look at it. The value of the angle LPQ, that is LPQ. That means this angle we have here as well. Now, let's take note. They said from the description here, this line LP and this particular line L and are equal in length, automatically giving here 45 degree and here 45 degree. Because any angle formed by a diameter at the circumference always 90 degrees. So in this case, if it is 45 degrees, what will be left here will be the same thing as that 135 degrees. So the correct answer now is C. Are you getting it? The correct answer is C. Question 24. Let us now look at question number 24. Now the value of the angle NPM. Okay. N P sorry. N P M. Well, I've told you before, the answer is 45, and that is and the 45 degree. So take note of that. 24, the correct answer is what? D. Question number 25, we have something here. They gave us this diagram, the sketch, if you got say, shows a curve propagated, propagated to by rolling a cylindrical, cylindrical surface. Use it to answer question 25 or 26. Now the curve T, that means this particular curve. What does it mean? Okay, if you look at this curve, actually it is a helix. It's a helix. Don't be deceived. Why do I say it's a helix? Even though it looks more like uh, what, cyclone, it is not. Why? It is a helix because this one comes like this. And the line that we see here now are dash lines. Are dash lines. Secondly, cyclone doesn't have this kind of shape. This is a helix. Cyclone has one kind of shape that goes like this. So the correct answer in this particular one is D. Please take note of that answer correctly. The answer is D. Now, question number 26. The length marked G is what? Simple, the circumference. It's the circumference of that one. It's simply the circumference, okay? Uh, of that particular one is the No, let us look at this. Sorry, the answer is not the circumference, but the pitch. Of course, since it is a helix, starting point of the movement start from here and return to this place. The correct answer is B, is pitch, not circumference. At the beginning, we are talking about cycloid. That is where circumference will come in. So the correct answer here is what is uh, uh, B. So that's the correct answer, for number 26. Now, Number 27, this is a similar triangle case. They have given us a polygon. They say it is TVWXY. This is T, yes, uh, it's supposed to be T, okay, V, uh, W, X, Y. So we have that particular one. To easily convert, the triangle is going to become X, S, G. This is the answer. The correct angle, angle, angle here, answer here is A. Yes, that's one that is parallel. That has the same area with the uh, polygon that we have just all these corners just now. So take note of that carefully. Question number 28 is what we are on to now. Uh, this is grammatical error. It's supposed to be radial line method, not radical line method, please. Remove that uh, C. We believe it's typographic error on the side of Yek. But then it's radial line method that is used. It's normally used to develop nothing but what? Prism. Prism A. The correct answer is what? It's A. 
So let's take note of that carefully. Question number 29. Question number 29 is a line P, Q, and Q are in figure 12, are two sides of a regular design. So the question now is of a regular what? How do you know the type of pentel or the type of polygon it is? The angle given to you outer here is 72 externally. So to find the number of sides of the polygon, just take the 72 and divide this is it. That will give you five sides. Automatically, the correct answer is what? Five. That is A, which is pentagon. That's the type of polygon you have here. Now, question number 30. All right. Question number 30 gives us something. The type of line shown in figure 13 is used to show what? It's used to show uh, how this particular is used to show or to indicate what? Normally, this particular one. Um, yes, this line is called root line. Yes, it's called root line. Of course, zigzag line. So the correct thing, it is normally used. Unlike a uh, wavy line, root line is used to show long bridges. So the correct answer here is A. So let's take note of that. The correct answer to this particular problem is A. All right? Now, question 30, before we enter, we have a section B. This is section B. We are going to have optional questions to answer. For schools that offer technical building drawing, this is your side where you train your children to know how to answer these questions properly. And for schools that center more on machine drawing, like my own school, where we center more on machine drawing, we face part two. So let us answer the questions in part one for the sake of those people who are offering machine drawing. One thing you must know is that the answer that is given to 31, if the answer is A in building drawing, is going to be A, machine drawing. Now, question number one, 31. The two shown below is called what? It is exactly a tri-square. The correct answer is A. It is what? A tri-square. That's the correct and exact answer. Then, question number 32. Now, the sketch in figure 15 shows a part of a building. Use it to answer 32 and 33 questions. Now, the part leveled M. What's the part leveled? That's the part. This is called wall plate now. The answer is also A. It's called wall plate. It's normally called wall plate. Yes, let's take it at that. Then let's look at question number no, question number 33. The length leveled X, that is distance from here to this part. What is the name of that length? And the answer is given to us in a very much easier way. The length is called back line. Yes, that's the answer. D. The answer is back line, not rise. Rise should fall between here and down here. Span is actually from here to this place. Rafter bucket is behind the roof. So this is back line. The correct answer is D. Then we have uh, question number 34. Question number 34. We have uh, the type of staircase shown in the system is what? It's called quarter turn. Only quarter turn. The answer is A. So that's the correct answer. The answer is what? A. Question number 35. All right. Uh, please don't mind the people who are shouting last Yes, It is the students who are doing their night reading and those who are also coordinating them trying to regulate things down there. So bear with us. Now, question 35. Which of the following symbols represent transparent hot material? Material is transparent in nature. The correct answer is C. Yes, this is the symbol for it. The C. Okay, so please take note of this. That's the correct answer. Question number 36. Now, this is uh, they say the type of drawing shown below is what? It's a plan, man. It's a building plan. Now, let us look at that. What's it called? It's a floor plan. The answer is what? B. That's a floor plan. So we need to be take note of that. The answer is B. It's a floor plan. Now, we have question 37. But then, to be used, this question will be used to answer three. This diagram will be used to answer three questions at the same time. So let's look at it. Which of the building part will not be shown in the section alone? Of course, the part that will not be shown will be G, because the section here will prevent us from seeing the door. So G will not be seen. The sun will appear. Window will appear. Automatically, door G will be hidden. It cannot be shown in this particular diagram. Now, question number 38. 
the conventional use, conventional use for representing the world in this, of course, the answer is C. That's the convention for representing walls in building. That's the convention for representing wall. Now, question number 39. Still on that particular question, the specification we are given associated with which of the following building parts. Now, the correct answer for this particular question is G. Normally, that's where you get it. The length of the door is 90. The height of the door is 2100. The thickness of the frame is what or the door is 40. So we take note of that. The answer is uh, G. That is the correct answer. Now, question number 40. All right. Uh, the, this is a question here. The type of door shown in figure 19 is what? Is flush door. What do they call it here? The correct answer is one edged abatting door. Of course, this thing you see in the middle here, abatting wood joined together. So it's one edge abatting door. Please don't be deceived because even me, I was nearly deceived when I looked at that. It was like, but I later verified things and found out that the correct answer is batting door. All right, let's go to part two, which is mechanical drawing. So here, for those of us who are into mechanical drawing, here we go. Now, 31. Question 31. The type of section in this part is half section. The answer is B. It is half section. All right? The answer is B. Half section. Uh -huh. Number 32. Correct. The construction of a gear is an application of what? Gear. It is gear. That's number 32. It's application of involute. Look before you see. This is the answer is what? A. The correct answer is A. All right, so let's take note of that. Now, question number 33. Structural design based on the principle of what is helix? Nothing more. It's the principle of what helix? 33 is helix. D is the correct answer. Question number 34. It says the type of weld shown in figure 20, 21 is what? Well, the correct answer here is nothing but fillet weld. Is fillet weld. So please take note of the answer is A. Then question number 35. The type of key used in this component show. You see this kind of hole? It's normally for well, this, uh, this kind of key. We normally, uh, we normally take this key, but it is Woodruff key. It is Woodruff key. This one, the answer is C. Woodruff is the correct answer. That is, can be fitted into here to join this shaft together with this uh, machine part. Are you getting it? Very good. Now, question number 36. All right. Uh, the type of pin shown in figure 23 is what? It's the part, you know, it is split pin because this one can be open. The pin can be open at the end of it or split pin. So take good note of that. Question number 37. Now, the thread profile shown in figure 24 is what it is, what acne key, the answer, the acne thread yeah, profile, the answer is B. So, there's no need to ways about that. There's no need to ways about that. Question number 38, the type of Q thread was shown in figure 25 is what, the correct answer is countersunk head screw. It's countersunk head screw. So, please take note of that. Then, question number 39. Uh -huh. Which of the following shows the conventional method of dimensioning a chamfered head? The correct answer is C. That is the correct answer of well, sectioning it, uh, dimensioning this one. And lastly, we have question 40. Now, the sectional view in figure 29 is what? The correct answer for this one is internal thread. This is an internal thread, and there's nothing more we can do about that. Yes, and this brings us to the end of this uh, solution set. Of 2022. We hope that by the grace of God, immediately these children of 2020 is students writing 2023 questions, finish writing the exam, and lay my hands on the question. Hopefully, we'll upload that also as soon as possible. And for those who are probably requested that I should also add, start teaching the theory and the practical aspect. You know, that one demands, sorry, a lot of commitment, but I'm hoping that with time, we will begin to also bring that so soon as case map, but just to meet the need of those who are having issues with technical drawing. 
Like you, my listeners, please subscribe to this channel if it really blesses you and you feel it is necessary. Share it with people and use it for your lessons. You are free to use it anywhere. So follow me up. You can subscribe to the channel, like and make your comments. And I need to encourage you to help this thing grow far to people who will need this for their own academic progress. Thank you and God bless you. Till we meet next time.